mindset comes from acknowledging that we are not our mind or our thoughts. Business of Architecture, episode 323. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears. This is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for building an architecture practice that doesn't get in the way of you doing your best work more often. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Practices, the world's only step-by-step business training program that shows you how to structure your practice so the complexity of running a business doesn't get in the way of you doing your best work. Discover more by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart. Today is the second half of my interview with interior designer Michelle Lynn of ML Interior Design Group based out of Dallas, Texas. Tony Robbins is famous for saying that success is 20% mechanics and 80% psychology. When I first heard that, I wondered, what is he talking about? I understand the mechanics of business, that I get, but what does he mean by psychology? Well, that's what you'll discover today, how your psychology influences your results. Whether you're a firm owner now, whether you plan to run your own firm in the future, or whether you're currently and happily employed and working for someone else. You'll find this interview to be very valuable as we talk about the psychology and the mindset of success. Michelle, welcome back to the Business of Architecture podcast. And as we mentioned in our last episode, today we want to have a conversation about mindset. So last week we talked about, well, it was actually about a couple minutes ago, but for our listeners it was last week, talked about processes, talked about some of the typical roadblocks that interior designers face in building out the dream that, you know, the dream that they have for their business. Now, when we talk about mindset, first of all, let's define it. What what are we talking about when we say mindset? Well, I think mindset, and it's, it's interesting, I think it depends on where you are in your life and where you are in your career. But I do believe that your mind is, your mind is a 2,000 year old piece of software, if you think about it. This mind of ours was created to protect us when there were woolly mammoths and stuff running around chasing us. And our mind is always looking for what's wrong. And so I believe that mindset has to do with recognizing the fact that we are not our thoughts. Our mindset is that, yes, there's always something that you can find that's wrong. Our mind is trained to do that. Protect me. Thank you. But you can acknowledge that and say, that is just a thought. That is not who I am. That is not the truth. And that is not going to limit me. So I believe that mindset comes from acknowledging that we are not our mind or our thoughts. And that to help help us understand that, what so this is a I love this distinction of we're not our thoughts. Give me an example of when we think we are our thoughts. What does that look like? So, um, fat, like I am fat, right? People will say I am fat. Well, you are not fat. You have fat. You know what? You have fingernails too. <laughs> Doesn't mean that you are a fingernail. So. The thought that I am not good enough to start my own business or the thought that I am not worthy of earning a certain amount of money. You know what? It, there's a difference between I am not worthy, but my cert, you know, who says you're not worthy? Why, why, is, mm. why is earning money a bad thing? And the difference is as well is that they're not paying you to be you. They're paying you for the deliverable service that you are providing. So your mm. service is what they're paying for. They're not paying for you. I mean, they are, but at the end of the day, it's not a value of yourself. It is a value. Yeah, of- they're not going to take me home and lock me in a closet. I mean, unless this is like Chainsaw Massacre in Texas or something, right? <laughs> exactly. That would be a whole different, that would be a whole different conversation. But um yeah, separating separating yourself from your thought. And I think when I first heard that, I am not my thoughts, it was like, yeah, but I think these thoughts every day, every day, everything, every la 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 la. Hmm. I can stop them. I can redirect them to I, you know, whether it's I am a badass. 
I am able to do this. I am capable. Like, this is a really amazing design. It is, it is worthy of X number of dollars. So it, it was just like mind blowing. And if I can teach my children that, and if I can teach my students that, and just, I think it, it, mm. it opens up so much. Very powerful. Where did you first come across that concept? Where have you learned this most powerfully in your journey and your search? Uh, I can tell other you. Other mentors, other books, other all, all of resources. Yes. So I think when I first got curious, it was after college. And I could tell you, I was driving to meet my area director for dinner. Well, I could tell you the intersection I was in and the car I was driving. And I had this epiphany that not everybody thinks like I do. And so there was that. And then I was like, okay, so I want to learn more about how other people think. So there were books like um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That was amazing. I'll tell you, Tony Robbins has been amazing at delivering a message. And whether or not you like his approach, his message, he takes so much information from so many different people and boils it down into the most simplistic manner to deliver it. Um, Jim Fortin is an amazing mindset master as well. Um, lots of meditation on my own. Um, just the, 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 the teachings of the Bible. I mean, God teaches the, you know, we are worthy. We are worthy. And so, you know, trusting and putting your faith in him is, is one direction that you can take it. But whether or not you believe in God or you believe in the universe or anything like that, there is this powerful scientific energy that you can control through your, and this might sound way woo woo, especially to, you know, like the architects and some of the individuals are very creative on one side, but are definitely very linear on the other. But I think you really truly can control your own mind and that shapes your, your, it shapes your life. Um, because if you believe you can, yeah. or you believe you can't, you're right. I think Henry, Henry Ford might've said that. I so, love it. Love yeah. It. Thanks for that great explanation. Michelle makes, makes a lot of sense. And hopefully that makes sense to our listeners as well. Kind of give them a sneak peek on some of those powerful technologies about creating things that they want. When you talk about mindset, one of the things that you talk about is the positive money mindset. Let's touch on that. What, what, how does that show up in dealing with designers? I believe that it goes back to our last conversation, and a lot of it has to do with the processes. Um, but a positive money mindset is also recognizing that when you are impacting somebody's life, but through design, through good design, you are changing their life. When they wake up in the morning, when they when they go to sleep at night, they're in their sanctuary. They are in this haven that you have created for them. And to provide that service to them is a value that you're offering. And to have a positive money mindset means that you are confident enough to ask for compensation to change that person's life and to be worthy of it and to accept it graciously. If you come across a lot of money, I don't believe it changes you. I think if you're a, a, a jerk to begin with, you're going to be a jerk with a lot of money. If you are a saint to begin with, you're going to be a saint with a lot of money or a jerk without money mm -hmm. or a jerk without or a saint without money. So understanding that money is simply a tool that you can use to impact others. Like the more income you have, the more impact you can have. So having a positive understanding of money as a tool, I believe is, is, is that mindset that comes with, with the, whatever story we have about money and the stories come from our parents. The stories come mm. from our, 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 our youth and our friends and the influences and so forth. So understanding that it is just a story, a thought that we've told ourselves over and over, that again goes back and can be broken and rewired in our brain. 
Mm. Have you heard of the the book Money Scripts by Dr. Brad? I'm looking it up here. Dr. Dr. Klontz is his name. There's a whole book about money scripts, and he just goes into it. Tons of scientific research about what determines how we approach money, like from a very scientific standpoint. We had him on the Business of Architecture UK podcast a few episodes ago. Uh, I highly recommend that if you haven't come across really interesting stuff. I will definitely look at that. And yeah, and I'll go back and listen to that episode as well. Well, what's the key to having these money scripts or these these money mindsets or just the mindset? How can we have the mindset empower us and help us achieve what we want to do? What do you feel is the key there, Michelle, based upon your business and what you your life experience? I believe having I believe having a, a a mindset needs to be compounded with the action and the foundation. Like I could sit here and we were talking about fat earlier. It's just easy enough that I think people might be able to relate to that, but I can sit here and think, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm skinny. I'm skinny. I'm a size, whatever. I'm a size, whatever. And I'm sitting here eating ice cream for breakfast and cake for lunch and drinking wine for dinner. I I can have that mindset forever, but the actions have to be following suit. So as a business owner, you have to create a foundation You have to create the processes and the procedures. You have to have a viable, sellable product or service, as the case may be. And then you have to believe in it. So it all goes together as ingredients that compound one another. Um, Because if if you're going to sit here and you're going to eat junk and you're going to think you're going to be healthy, it's just not going to happen. If you sit here and you create a business that is just on a bed of straw, it's not going to happen. It's, it's it's as architects, you understand that you have to have a strong foundation. You have to put the pillars in place. Um, and if those yeah. are not in place, they're not going to, they're not going to withstand the weight that look that, that bears on it later, the load bearing. Michelle, how do you, how much do you think that maybe lack of confidence or lack of certainty or, or lack of belief of self-belief about someone's own value, for instance, the value of the services that I provide how much do you think that affects the the way that they're able to charge, the work that they're able to do, the way they show up in the world? I think it impacts quite a bit. And I think more so than we, th- than we talk about or think about. I think that if, if more people would talk about their own insecurities and vulnerabilities, that there wouldn't be as many masks put on and there would be more truth telling and we would all elevate. Um, as, as an industry, as a humanity, and so forth. So I really think that a lack of confidence, um, unfortunately, is it, it permeates. And I don't know, I think there's a difference between women and men to a certain extent as well, just the way society has us um, marked, for lack of a better term. Um, but I think talking about it is, is the first step. And also seeing others who have gone before you. And I, I think I've said this a couple of times, seeing others who have gone before you and who have accomplished what, what, what somebody else wants to accomplish. It goes back to, oh my gosh, I cannot remember his name. Um, the guy who ran the first six minute mile. So for, for years and years and years, nobody could run a six minute mile. This one guy runs a six minute mile. And then all of a sudden, everybody's running a six minute mile because they, they understood that it could be done. So yeah, you must not be a runner, Michelle. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you make a great point. It was it was Roger Bannister, and it was a four minute mile. It was a four minute mile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, four minute mile. How many times I've told that story incorrectly? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. But we get the point, and you're making an, an excellent. I mean, it's such a it's such a powerful example of for years and years and years. Right? Is that? People thought it was literally impossible to hit that four minute mile. So what what are the four minute miles in our own life? I mean Yeah. I think a lot of it just comes down to a certain um let's just say it's like let's just say in our own business, whether it is a certain revenue project, a certain photographic style or or a published project, a certain revenue annually and or certain staff. I mean, there's so many different things that I believe that we measure ourselves on. 
And I will say as well, and I just sent out a, an email to a lot of my um, design clients, is that I firmly believe right now in the middle of this shelter in place that we're all having a lot more time to really look inside ourselves and determine what's important, what's not important, business, like, and I, I, I look at it as I'm a wife first, I'm a mother second, I'm a business owner third. And so what really do I want to take from before COVID to after COVID? Because this is how we're going to be measuring a lot of things. And what do I want to change and be in the future? And what do I want to leave behind? So I think that answering that question today for me is very, it's changing, it's shifting. What it was two months ago, what it's going to be two months from now, in some areas are going to be exactly the same. And in some areas, there's going to be some, there's going to be some changes. Look at, mm. look at all the time well, what, what, that we're not working. <laughs> what's that? Look at all the time that we're not working right now and, and mm. finding, finding ways to fill our time that's joyful. I mean, what what a great message for for today, like literally for these past couple of weeks. And I think hopefully this mindset episode has helped our audience a bit just to realize that they're not their thoughts. So whether you feel scared, whether you feel anxious, mm-hmm. that's not you. That's your mind kicking in the 200,000-year-old protection mechanism, not wanting to get eaten by the saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, Michelle, I know you have some some fantastic resources that you'd like to share with our listeners who would like to pick those up. Where can they go to get those and what are they? So I have, I actually have three. So it depends on who's listening. One is that especially right now we're offering virtual, we're, we're offering, we, excuse me, we've always offered virtual design services. It's been in our wheelhouse because we serve clients outside of the Dallas Fort Worth area that don't necessarily fly us there. Right now, we're offering 10% off of any virtual design service. So if somebody needs a refresh, we can do it from afar. I also have my review and planning guide, which I absolutely adore. It is great for looking back at what's worked over the past year, past quarter, past six months, assessing what you like, what you don't like, what you can outsource and so forth, and, and then planning for the future. And this is something that I do annually. There's been some years I've done it every quarter because things are evolving so quickly. And I just believe that whether you have a creative mind or a linear mind, it's still very useful. And then finally is I am offering a discount off of my interior design business masterclass. And I've created one that's self-paced specifically for the time that we're in right now. It's normally offered only two to three times a year. But right now, the self-paced version, I will offer that for as long as anybody calls in and says, hey, I heard you on the podcast. And they can find those three things at designed for the creative mind forward slash architecture. In Beautiful. Honor your audience. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for coming on here, showing your expertise. Good job on helping to spread the word about creating better businesses, empowering designers. And it's been a pleasure speaking. Thank you. Likewise. Appreciate you having me on. And that's a wrap. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Practices, the world's leading step-by-step business training program that's helped more than 103 architecture firm owners structure their existing practice so the complexity of business doesn't get in the way of their architecture. Because you see, it's not your architecture or design skills that's holding you back. It's the complexity of running a business, managing projects and people, dealing with clients, contractors, and money. So if you're ready to simplify the running of your practice, go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart to discover the proven, simple, and easy to implement smart practice method for running a practice that doesn't get in the way of doing exceptional architecture. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.